How's it going, guys? If you've been watching my videos lately, you know that this building site is a little bit further along than what I'm showing right here. But anyway, I just hadn't got a chance to show you um, how we got to the point we are now. So that's what I'm doing now. Obviously, we're doing some grading here, and what what this piece here we're grading is see where the truck is sitting is kind of where the building is footer is going to be but where we're grading at right now is uh and that's dad running the excavator by the way um uh, where we're, what we're grading right there it this is the road that's going to go around the side of the building to the left side of the building because there's a garage door on the end out there about where that ingersoll ran roller setting there's going to be a garage door um and then so and there's going to be a road that comes out the back of the building and goes around and comes back down over towards our shop but this road here is going to let you drive around the outside of the building back there to that door and we've got uh, enough grindings down and we've got some uh, uh grass growing around the uh around the building site that we that our erosion issues are non-existent now we've got enough ground covered up that we can go ahead and cut that road out before we had so much area uncovered we were right up against the limit of uh, 10,000 square feet you can't go over 10,000 square feet without getting uh, erosion permits and blah 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 so we're trying to keep everything under 10,000 square feet that's open without gravel or or uh, grass on it I think I've explained that before so uh, anyway well this corner that I'm in right now this is the northeast corner and uh, it's still low it's like three foot low or something over here three or four foot so we need a bunch more dirt so we're getting the dirt we got really good dirt right there where dad is digging at so we're putting filling this dirt putting this dirt in this corner and then we are rolling it with compactor uh that grass is right in front of me i got to take that grass out and build that corner up there some more also even though that's not going to be under the building uh, i've got to get it built up some so it will um, so you can uh, get a trailer turned in because the building is up a little higher than the road so we wanted the one thing we wanted the water to be able to drain away from the building towards the road for one and then two we were trying to keep from being so terribly deep back there in that corner that you're facing right now because the closer we got it to the road elevation the more cut we had back there which meant we had to move more dirt and uh, more time and more expense and and then the garage door would be in the back would be way below grade and we would have had to cut a whole lot more dirt back there to get that road in so we we're trying to balance it out where it just we didn't have to do quite so much cutting it's a little more fill but we have plenty of dirt because of all the roads that we have to cut around this thing to make it work so anyway, I hope y'all enjoy watching me run the bulldozer. It's going to be a super long video if I don't speed it up some. I know y'all hate sped up stuff, or most of you do, but just one clip of this video here is 32 minutes long. And then I've got some other clips I wanted to add, so this video would be extremely long and Nobody would ever click on it because they're like, well, I ain't got time to watch it. So I want to speed it up. I want to speed parts of it up. Please don't get too mad at me. But, uh, uh, anyway. And no, I'm not using the laser right now. The receiver is on there. And what I, I've got it set for uh, final subgrade. Wait, subgrade is a final. So I don't know why I said final subgrade. But it's, uh... It's set for subgrade, which is the, the grade that we want the dirt before the asphalt grindings are placed onto it. So 
I'm uh, I'm just doing this free-handed right now, if you want to say, which uh, you know, this is how I normally, even when I'm using GPS, I put me in my lifts by eye and uh, by feel. But when it comes to fine grading, I can do it without GPS. I can do it without lasers. But that's you know, in our business, productivity is is uh, king. I mean, productivity, getting stuff done in a timely manner, and getting it done right and with precision accuracy is what makes you money. It's not sitting there screwing with it for two days and wondering and hoping you got it right. Get out an instrument and check it. Make sure it's right. If you, especially on a paying customer's job don't just look at it and say well I think it's right or I think it's good enough if they're paying you to do something you better have a laser or something especially on a building pad I mean if you're building a road and you got some leniency yeah you don't need to uh, you don't have to to get out a laser every time to, to you know to check things especially on you know with a, with a driveway or something that works continuously grade you know there's some there's some variance in that you can have and it, and it still works just fine as long as your waters can go to your ditches and, and stuff like that and you know there's a lot of situations you don't need instruments but when you're doing a building pad or you're doing a parking lot that has to be per plans or you or anything you build that has to be built per plans you better check it with some sort of instrument your butt is not good enough in my opinion uh, yes, your butt will tell you a lot of things, and if you're an operator, you know what I mean. Your butt can tell you how you're, you know, if you're sitting to the left, to the right, front, rear. Um, your other, it's not just your butt either. It's your all your senses. All your senses can fit. You know, you use them all together to sense how your machine is set, and whether you're you have tilt side to side, front to back, or you know to get water to go one way or the other but when it comes time to having a 70 foot wide by 130 foot long and it actually has to be bigger than that because that's the building dimensions um, and it has to be flat you better have an instrument set up I don't care who you are but anyway uh, but with the automatic laser some people call it cheating, I call it smart. I, it speeds you up 75, 80%, maybe even more than that. Um, you don't have to have a man checking grades. You just flip a switch, those are locks on, and you, you cut it to grade right then and there and no questions asked. Um, that's how you make money in this business. You get it done extremely fast and you get it done with precision accuracy and you have happy customers that want you to do everything for them. So, uh, or that's our strategy anyway. I probably shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't be telling everybody that. But anyway, um, that's how we like to do things. Do it right. Do it right to start the first time. Um, but anyway, I'm going to shut up now. Y'all can uh, watch me run this dozer. We're getting ready to peel this uh, topsoil off. Dad moved over here to load topsoil on the Arctic truck. That stupid Arctic truck. I don't know what's going on with it. It keeps shutting off. The whole day we were doing this, um, it kept shutting down on the guy that was running it. He'd, he'd go to dump the dirt and he'd be gone for 10 minutes and he'd come back and say it was shutting off on it. It's something electrical because the whole electrical system was shutting off on the truck. So I don't know if it's in the ignition switch or the computer or something, but that's something we're going to have to sort out. We hadn't had time yet. That truck is uh, kind of a, that truck just sets a lot anyway. We use it as a yard truck mostly and it just, it sets a lot and then it gets run for a while and sets a lot. We use it to, for our screen topsoil and stuff like that to, to move stuff around the yard. It works good for that. It's actually one of the new it's actually the newest truck we've got around here. All the rest of them are C series trucks and that one is a 
a D series truck. So it's a little bit nicer than the other ones we have. Uh, we've got about six of them or so running around. We, we call them Arctic trucks or articulated off-road dump trucks. That's what they are. We just call them Arctic trucks. Uh, but when you need them, you need them. They're, they're really handy. They, they'll actually, they're six-wheel drive. You, you can lock them in where all six wheels will pull if you get all the right buttons and switches and stuff flipped there inside the cab. It can be kind of confusing because you got a you got a front differential lock and you, know, you got a rear differential lock and then you got the the lock that locks the fronts and the rears together to make it a six wheel drive truck and then uh, once you lock it in six wheel drive and then you got to use the differential locks for uh, to get all six wheels turning. And then there's a button in the floor you can mash that will that will no matter what will lock all six wheels in. You, you got to have a, a operator. You got got a train operator. Just how to use it. The rest of the truck's simple, but getting the, the six wheel drive, all that to work can be uh, can be a pain in the butt if you if you don't know what you're doing and never done it. The rest of the truck, you just put it in drive. I mean, it's automatic. You put it in drive or reverse, or, uh, and, and that's all there is to it. To raise the bed up and down, there's no PTO or anything like that you got to deal with. You just grab a lever and pull the lever, and the bed goes up. Push the lever, and the bed goes down. Uh, they are a little bit difficult to back up if you're used to backing up a trailer. If you can back up a trailer, you're going to have a hard time backing up that truck. But if you can't back up a trailer, you could probably get in it and back it up no, with no problem because it looks like you're trying to push a trailer in the mirror so it makes you want to steer the opposite direction that you need to go. But you actually need, to, like if you want to go to the right, you need to steer it to the right, which I know doesn't sound complicated, but if you're used to backing a trailer, when you start backing up, uh, you, want, you first have to, to cut the wheels on your vehicle the opposite direction you want the trailer to go and then you follow up by following the trailer well in those trucks they look like you're pushing the trailer because of the way they articulate so it can really mess with your mind but anyway they're a lot of fun to drive until you have to do it for about a week and then it gets pretty old been there and done that we, we uh, added a half a mile of runway to the airport that's across the road from this place. And I drove one. It was it was a long time ago. I was I might have still been in high school or just getting out of high school. But, uh, I drove one for days and days and days and days over there. We had uh, four of them running, I believe, and, and uh, it was fun and exciting times. Well, it was a steep hill we were hauling off of. We were cutting the hill down. We'd come off that hill about 30 miles an hour, top speed, just getting it off that hill. Uh, it was it was fun, but it got old too. But anyway, hope y'all enjoy this video, and I'm gonna I'm going to finish editing it here so you can watch it, and uh, hope you can enjoy it. Talk to y'all later.
right, so we spent the morning working on this pad. It's a Friday morning. Well, it's Friday evening now, but this morning we worked on the pad. And uh, we got the whole thing on grade now, or the building part of it anyway. And we had to raise this corner up about five feet. So we had to move right smart dirt into right here. And uh, we got the dirt from over there along the edge. See how much cut there is back there. We're building a road around the around the back to the back of the building. So we cut the dirt out from over over around the back the side of the building over there and the back of the building. We're eventually going to cut all that dirt back there at the back of the building out because there's another road that comes up the hill over here. And we're going to tie the back. There's going to be a door in the back. We're going to tie the road into the to the back door of the building. So all that dirt back there has got to go eventually, but right now we're just worried about getting the building pad and getting footers in. We're going to start digging footers soon. So we had to get the pad on grade. So, and I got this slope here. I got a few rocks to get up, but I got this slope on the lower side of the building ready, basically for some grass seed. So that's where we're at on this. This is the going to be the part of the, the the open end of the building here facing this road so you'll be able to just drive up and drive into the building the building will be this way out towards the truck and the excavators long ways that way 125 feet long 70 feet wide so we're getting there slowly we only this is really the the for first time that well, we've been working on it, but it's the first time me and Dad and a couple of other guys jumped on it here all at once and and went after it. We've just been too busy to do that till today. So we got right smart of it done today. And could have done a lot more, but we had we gotta go to some other places. So we'll see y'all later. <laughs>